This is Rogers TV, Durham Region. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. This is Talk Politics. I'm Deborah Hutchison in the Rogers TV studio, and we have a very special guest this week. Joining us via Zoom is the newly elected leader of the Conservative Party of Canada and our own Durham Riding MP, Aaron O'Toole. Aaron, welcome back to the show. It's great to be with you, Deborah. Well, this is the first opportunity we've had to speak since your election, so first and foremost, congratulations. Is it, has it sunk in? Well, thank you very much. It has sunk in, and I'm happy to say that many people in Durham did stay up till 1.30 to see me give my speech uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, it wasn't what we'd planned, but I told people I would have waited till sunrise to give that victory speech. How excruciating, excruciating was it to wait that long? How did you keep the kids awake? Well, Jack was on cloud nine. He's nine, and I don't think he's ever stayed up uh, that late in his life because we were, he didn't go to bed until I think 4 a.m. Um, it was a special night for our family, you know, Molly and Jack. Uh, Molly remembers when dad was a lawyer who lived in Curtis and worked in Toronto, but Jack was one when I was elected in the by-election, Deborah, and, and he really only knows me in my role as the MP for, for his, the place he grew up. And, uh, it's an immense honor and Rebecca and I have celebrated 20 years of marriage just a few days before the leadership. So it was all kind of overwhelming, but we are always united as a family because we believe in what we're doing. Your dad and mom were there too, correct? Yes, my dad, uh, mom, and it was kind of a bit surreal giving a very important speech like that in the middle of the night in largely an empty room mm -hmm. because of COVID. But um, you know, to see my, my dad standing with, with Molly and Jack and Rebecca and, and John and Peggy, it was very, very special. And of course, your dad, John O'Toole, uh, was our area MPP for close to two decades. What was, what were the first words that he said to you? Well, you know, when I walked over, he was standing uh, next to, to Molly, my daughter, who of course is named after my late mom. And, you know, he, I could just see he had a tear in his eye. He, it, for the first time in John O'Toole's life, he was speechless, Deborah. <laughs> uh, so for the guy who used to speak the most in the Ontario legislature in most years, known for, uh, for, for strongly advocating for our region and its workers and people, he was speechless, but he was so proud. And I got interested in public service because of him. I was in the military when he was first elected. And uh, it was just a special moment. People couldn't be there, but my military friends got in a hotel room at the hotel adjacent to where I gave the speech. And, and some of my friends that have helped in my political career and my legal career. Um, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have great friends and great family behind me. And that's why I had the success. And I never forget that I'm the kid from Bowmanville that now has this immense opportunity to serve our country. Now, Parliament will reopen September 23rd with a speech from the throne. Um, there will be a confidence vote that could trigger an election. Is it the right time for an election? No, it's the right time actually for a plan post first wave of COVID. You know, we have these, the uh, emergency programs all coming to an end now, the CERB, uh, some of the mortgage assistant programs. And our concern is we haven't heard a clear plan from the Liberals on how we're going to get people back to work, how we're going to get better trade deals, get rid of the tariffs on aluminum and potentially steel again. We've had a lot of uncertainty even before COVID, Deborah. So my focus and the focus of the Conservative team is on small businesses. Uh, I mentioned, you know, my, our favorite restaurant in Curtis, Thai Hotspot, uh, closed because they, they couldn't hold on through a pandemic. So I want to see a plan to help these families. And uh, that's my priority, not an election. A poll conducted by Leger um, shows that 52% of the respondents said they didn't know enough about you um, to say whether they had a positive or, or a negative impression of you. How are you going to change that? 
Well, I view that as a good thing, Deborah. You know, my political career, I'm not a career politician. I've been in seven years. I'm, I'm scandal free, knock on wood. And, uh, and I promised Rebecca I'd stay that way. So I haven't generated headlines. I'm a guy that rolls up my sleeve and gets things done. And as Canadians get to know me, do they want the guy who seeks out magazine covers, helps his liberal insider friends, even his charitable friends in the middle of a pandemic? Or do they want someone who's going to fight for them? Uh, being prime minister for me is not about me. It's about you. It's about the country. It's about our future. And I'm very worried about it. So the more people get to know my own personal story, kid from suburban Toronto who was taught to work hard, served in the military for 12 years, and then in the private sector. I belonged to the Legion, the Rotary. I started a charity for military families. I'm known as someone that works as part of a team or now leads a team. And I think I'll fight for Canadians. I won't fight for attention. Uh, so you say you have a, a Canada first policy. How does that differ from Trump's America first policy? Well, I love this is what the Liberals are trying to suggest to the media. Um, I worked with the Liberal government and with Doug Ford to try and get PPE for Lake Ridge Health, working with Dr. Stone and our amazing front lines in, in the Durham region because there were PPE shortages. We cannot have that happen again. We have to have self-sufficiency in key things. Um, we also can't have failing after failing trade deals with Mr. Trudeau. We now have a weakened NAFTA that is hurting our auto parts and our auto uh, manufacturing business. You know, you and I, Deborah, talked about the closure of GM. I, I grew up, my dad worked at GM, and so did most of the kids in my class in, in Bowmanville when I was a kid. So. We need to make sure that some manufacturing that has gone to China in recent years, a country that doesn't follow trade laws, doesn't respect human rights, doesn't respect international law, we should have free trade, but amongst free countries. And so we're going to look at bringing back critical manufacturing, but also looking to fight for workers. Uh, families need the right to, to provide for their kids and for their retirement. So I'm going to turn a few things on their head because I think the liberals have been failing working families. So has the NDP. In opposition, how can you, uh, I guess, successfully bring about that change without being the top dog yourself? Well, we have a constitutional duty to hold the government to account, to oppose, but also propose ideas and measures. So Justin Trudeau prorogued Parliament, something he promised he would never do to avoid the tough questions about the We Charity scandal and the resignation of his finance minister. Like his government has now had three ethical investigations against the prime minister himself. His family was benefiting from a charity that they were giving a sweetheart deal to. Canadians deserve better than that. So we're going to hold them to account for corruption, but I'm gonna also propose what we should be doing with respect to putting the Canadian economy first, our PPE needs first. We saw during COVID, Deborah, even the US wasn't acknowledging our access to some of the N95 masks. So I think most Canadians want us to have that degree of self-sufficiency. I also want us to, to support some food security. And so we can depend more on what we're producing here and trade with countries that we depend on and we can rely on. And you're gonna see a global shift in trade patterns post COVID. And I want Canada to help lead that shift to our best interests, not be dragged along. That's what will happen under the, the Trudeau Liberals. So you're going to see us propose a lot of ideas, not just oppose and criticize. So of course, as we are, are speaking, it is September uh, 11th, 19 years ago uh, today, a, a horrible day. Did the memories just flood back today of where you were? You know what? Yes, because I was on duty uh, with the Air Force that day, but I had left the regular forces and I was in law school and I had a morning class in Halifax at Dalhousie and I was driving over to, to do my shift as a training officer at Shearwater and I waved that morning at the commissioners. There was an open gate on the base and by the time I left that night, airspace was closed. Our base was receiving passengers from airliners that 
Most of them went to Gander, but some came to Halifax. And by the time I left that base that night to, to go back home, there was armed guards and the base was shut down as if we were at war. So I saw the world change as everyone did in an instant. And some of my friends then went and served in the longest Canadian mission in Afghanistan or history. That's why, you know, as a, as a politician, I've always tried to honor those who serve our country. And I'm very proud Durham hosts the Highway of Heroes monument in Bowmanville at the Clarington Fields, where people can reflect on those who served and paid the ultimate sacrifice, including Bowmanville's own Daryl Caswell and, and many other families from Southern Ontario. We, we must never forget what began 19 years ago today. Are we a safer, more secure country than we were 19 years ago? I think we are largely, yes. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of the Darlington Generating Station and pre 9-11, you could pretty much drive uh, right up to the reactor almost. I think we lived in the, the peace and security that we've known in North America for many years because our wars traditionally were always overseas in Europe or in Korea or they were always risks far away from us and terrorism brought that risk home. And I think we have we have taken it seriously. I am actually very proud OPG hires a lot of former Canadian Forces people as part of their security for, for our generating stations in, in Darlington and, and in Pickering. I think we are more conscious going and getting on an airplane was never the same after 9-11, as you know, Deborah. So I think we're more conscious. We, we have to make sure we fight for our liberties, but also take public safety and security seriously as well. And I think our law enforcement and our security and intelligence services do a good job. Okay, we've only got about another, I guess, minute and a half, and then we have to say goodbye to you. I, I want to ask you, take it back to the family. Um, I'm sure you have received lots of advice over the years, lots of political advice, and I guess life advice from your dad. What's the best piece of advice he has ever given you that will help you in your new position? <laughs> He had a great expression, Deborah, that I've shared with new politicians myself. You're born with two ears and one mouth, so you should listen twice as much as you speak. And so I'm now listening to union leaders, to business leaders, to families, to uh, Canadians from coast to coast to coast, to understand their, their hopes and their fears, but also their, their passions for Canada. And I'm gonna try and make sure that our conservative team reflects that. It's not about the Ottawa bubble and, and liberal insiders. Uh, it's about serving Canadians. So I'm going to be listening just as Johnny O, as we call him, uh, told me to. Johnny O. I love that. And in regards to your, your family, is the family then moving to Ottawa with you? This is a, a big change um, for them. Yes. Well, you know, in the last couple of years, when I ran for leader last time, um, I guess two times is, is a charm, Deborah. <laughs> I won the second time. I learned a lot the first time. Uh, we have a home in Bowmanville and a, and a home in, in Ottawa because the kids a few years ago started going to school here just because my most important job is, is husband and father. And I was letting that down a little bit because my children are young. Uh, Rebecca and I had kids a little later because of my military time. And and uh, so this, this move into this, uh, this new role is an awesome responsibility and uh but i'm never going to forget i'm the kid from morgandale crescent in bowmanville and we're trying to respect others uh, do your best and serve and that's that's how i was raised by my dad and and two remarkable moms and and uh, it's the same values rebecca and i are trying to instill so there's some formality that goes with being the leader of the opposition and potentially the, the prime minister, but we will stay grounded, Durham grounded, you could say. Okay, and on that, they're telling me I have to let you go. Thanks again, Aaron, for spending some time with us. All the best. Thank you. I look back forward to getting back into studio when we can finally do that. I'm holding you to it, Aaron O'Toole. Thank you again. Thanks Thank to you. Aaron O'Toole, our guest this weekend. Thanks to you, our viewers, for joining us. Until next time, I'm Deborah Hutchison. Stay safe, everyone. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details.